Uh, my name is Ivy Jack. I work at Marstar Asset Management. Uh, my question to Marjorie, oh, and we have invested in Ujima, but my question to Marjorie, um, since I have kind of been in this impact, socially responsible mm -hmm. space, I will say one of the things that I've been disappointed about is that I don't feel like there is a justice angle to a lot of this work. Uh -huh. And so I know you had started to talk about some things related to race and race equality, but if you could just really expand mm -hmm. on kind of what your thinking is and how that would work, be helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah, that's great. I do think it's missing from from a lot of this work. I think that you're right about that. Um, and um, I will say with the with the Evergreen Co-ops in, in Cleveland, that was uh, they were built in a neighborhood that's 95 percent African American. Mm -hmm. So it was very deliberate. Um, to benefit those communities, so that that's one example. Um, so so how is this uh, being built out? There are some people who are um, working in the worker co-op space, particularly with a racial angle. And um, is, is that what you mean when you say justice? Mm -hmm. For example, there are uh, there's a group in the Bay Area that is helping women of color start um, cleaning cooperatives, and uh, so so they. They go out and clean in houses, and they, they actually own the company and can get higher wages. Also, um, one of the uh, companies I write about in the book is called Cooperative Home Care Associates. Um, Karen, who's here, used to work at their sister organization, Paraprofessional Health Institute. It's a it's a, a 33 year old company it has uh, 1,200 uh, more, uh, yeah about 1,200 workers, mostly uh, Latina and African American women doing doing home care. So. Um, Home care is an area where um, these are good jobs for entry level people, low income people, <clears throat> and there's a movement now to spread this model. There's 15 of these worker owned home health care companies, uh, either in existence or in formation right now. So that's, that's one example of a movement. I think part of this might be sector driven. This is one of the things that we're always thinking about. How do you scale this stuff? Um, and um, so some of this, some of this work, right now we're, we're exploring possibly some sector work with uh, commercial laundries attached to anchor institutions. Uh, and can they do hiring? I mean, they're sort of natural entry level jobs. Um, so what I would say is, you know, it's interesting. We, um, we're doing some work with finance, trying to get more capital into employee ownership. And I'm working with, uh, a very large uh, family office that is interested in this space and in, in, in investing in employee ownership, and they, and they are a little reluctant to do it with a with a racial lens. I'll say. So I find that it's an issue that um, not everybody gets it. I, I, I think we're not quite there yet. I mean, this is one of the reasons why uh, we're trying to take this up at the Democracy Collaborative, and we're. Um, we have a, a new vice president, uh, Ronnie Galvin, who is, um, um, he's, he's a man of color and uh, very accomplished, and he's building out some of our, our racial justice work. And so we want to find out what is the intersection between community wealth building and racial justice. And he's working with um, the faith community and with activist groups. And so our idea is, and it's kind of at the idea stage now, but our idea is, um, can you go into communities, particular cities, and we're sort of looking for those cities now, and say, let's start with acknowledging the depth of the problem. So, how many children are going hungry in this city? And what color are those children? You know, what, how much wealth? I mean, we know that African Americans have about one-tenth the wealth, the asset wealth, as, as white families. What, what are the wealth statistics in this community? Let's start by looking at the nature of the problem. Um, and and, and uh, Ronnie has the idea that maybe maybe there need to be some, some kind of truth and reconciliation process. I, I don't know, we're sort of at the early stages. And then can you also bring in, well let's do some economic development, which is about using our local assets. What are the assets that we have? What can we develop locally? Um, and how can we be inclusive as we do that? So I think that, um, so we're, we're in an exploratory phase on this. There are some places that are farther ahead than we are. There's a, a great group in the Bronx. Do you know what the name of that one is? This is the Bronx Exchange. Uh, it, I know, I know that one. the broader umbrella. Yeah, with, that MIT is doing? Yeah. 
What's it called? Uh, so the Bronx Exchange came out of the MIT Media Lab, uh -huh. but I think CDI is the broader parent. And that was the uh, I think it's the Cooperative Development Institute. Yeah, the Cooperative Development Institute. Yeah, Cooperative Development Institute. Okay, that. okay, that's great. That's great. So there's some very exciting work uh, being done. Um, I, I think people are, some people are further than others in, in figuring it out. Yeah. Lucas, did you want to add anything? Uh, to that particular question, uh, no, but I, I think I agree with you. <laughs>